Let's consider the weaknesses and things that Hunix simply isn't designed to do. So first thing, it's obvious to an observer that you are using Tor when you're using Hunix. It may also be obvious to an observer that you're using Hunix itself based on fingerprint information that it may give away. Hunix won't encrypt your documents by default. It's just simply not supposed to do that. It doesn't clear the metadata out of your documents. It doesn't encrypt the subject and other headers of your emails, encrypted emails, because that's not what it's designed to do. Hunix doesn't separate your different contextual identities. It is not advisable, as I've previously said, to use the same Hunix workstation to perform two tasks or endorse two contextual identities that you really want to keep separate from each other. It probably won't protect you against firmware rootkits or BIOS attacks. It won't protect you from hardware compromises like the Surly Spawn hardware keylogger in the NSA Ant catalog and the Rage Master, the VGA cable retro reflector. It won't protect you against hardware compromises like that. As is the same with any operating system and application, there could be security vulnerabilities and even a backdoor through either deliberate, coerced or accidental methods. But this is unlikely because Hunix essentially is really just a bunch of scripts. And as far as I'm aware, there's no actual compiled code. Hunix is more difficult to set up compared to, say, for example, the Tor browser on its own or Tails if you're just using it as a live CD. It requires that you have virtual machines, so therefore you need a hypervisor or you have spare hardware to run it on. It also requires higher maintenance than live CDs, as live CDs are just static. One of the most significant potential weaknesses in Hunix, if you need that feature, is that it is not an amnesiac system. So let me read from the website. Unlike Tails, Hunix is not an amnesiac live CD. If you install Hunix on your computer, this will leave local traces on the hard drive that you installed Hunix on that device. Any files you create will still exist after powering off or rebooting unless you securely wiped all signs of their previous existence. There are no special measures to limit what is written to disk. This includes user-created files, backup files, temporary files, swap, chat history, browser history, and so on. Hunix acts like an ordinary installed operating system. It also does not prevent the host memory swaps to the host disk, as we discussed in the section on VM weaknesses and data leaks. If you want an amnesiac system, or a system that forgets, much like Tails, there are a couple of potential workarounds. You could use snapshots and then restore back to a clean VM after you've finished your activities. And another option is encrypting the host operating system with full disk encryption. These will help mitigate local forensic examination, but they are not as good as not having the information there in the first place. But Hunix isn't designed to protect against local forensic examination. That is not the threat model that it is trying to mitigate. If this is your main concern, then Hunix is not the best option. The threats that Hunix is best suited to mitigate are protocol level leaks and ISP snooping. Hunix is not a one-click security, privacy and anonymity solution. I recommend Hunix for the more technical person or for anyone who is willing to spend some time really understanding how it works. Then customize it to your personal needs the documentation is excellent and goes into lots of detail about security, privacy and anonymity generally. So a thank you to the Hunix team for a great solution. Check it out if you haven't checked it out already.